Hi, my name is Gary and welcome to the channel. The video you're about to watch is one that I moved from my old YouTube channel onto its new permanent home on this YouTube channel. If you have any questions about the content that you're about to watch, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and if you like the content, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Both of those things really help support the channel and give me the ability to continue to produce more content for you. So without further ado, on to the video. All right, we're back again for video two of three. We're gonna show you the uh, generator load test. Uh, just before any of you wise guys on the internet start kind of posting in the comments, yes, I'm running the generators in the garage. Yes, the window's open. Yes, the garage door's cracked. Um, I just don't want to run them outside for obvious reasons. Um, I just don't want uh, too many neighbors uh, complaining about the noise or seeing that I have this set up uh, in my garage here. So if we go in and we look at the inverter as it is right now, you can see that it's in AC mode and we're in float charge. You can see the output voltage uh, from the inverter to uh, anything that's in the house. We have 120 volts out, 2.9, 2.8 amps, and about 305 watts. And on the input side, this is coming from the utility to the inverter. Uh, we have 120 volts and we have 100 and, or I'm sorry, 350 watts and about 3.3, 3.4 amps. And that's because the inverter's in float right now to keep the batteries uh, staying fully charged. So it constantly charges the batteries and tests the voltage and then, you know, charges them and make sure that uh, everything's operating properly. But what I'll do now is I'll cut away from this video. I'll get the generators hooked up and then I will uh, show you what a transfer looks like. Okay, we're back. I just wanted to walk through some of the connections right now. So like I said earlier, we've got uh, the generator plug right here. I made this uh, custom cable that then runs into uh, this uh, 15 amp RV plug. Uh, I custom made this box. It's got a 40 amp uh, breaker that's already in here. And then it goes out into my custom parallel kit that goes into uh, two Honda uh, EU 2000i generators. Uh, these generators do have uh, special uh, mechanisms in them to allow you to actually run them in parallel. Uh, you can actually buy a parallel kit from Honda, which allows you to do two generators. But if you do some searching on the internet, there's people that are doing three, four, and, and five of these generators for their RVs to run air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. So there's, there's no reason it won't be um, just as sufficient for the house. So a lot of you are going to start out asking questions. Well, you know, you spent all this money on these generators and they're only 2000 watt peak generators. Why wouldn't you have gone with something that's um, a little bit beefier? Well, the thinking behind that was I didn't want to go with a, a bigger generator simply if I ever needed to go mobile for whatever reason, or let's just say maybe I was having some fun, I was tailgating, or maybe I just wanted to go camping in my, my SUV, I could pick up one of these generators by myself very easily. Should I look at a generator that's even double the size of one of these generators, the, the weight, size, and the amount of fuel that it consumes while it's running goes up substantially and really wasn't worth the offset to me. I'd rather have spent a little bit more money on a very quiet, lightweight, fuel efficient generator than spending more money on a bigger generator that guzzles more fuel. Um, each one of these, like I said, puts out about 2000 watt peak. Uh, I do have a third generator, but we're not going to need it for this test. Uh, these are actually both going to be running in eco mode. And, and like I said, if you do some research on YouTube, uh, looking at people's other videos for Honda EU 2000 eyes, uh, you can see that they're doing, you know, crazy amounts of different things out there. Some people have even uh, claimed that they've, they've actually paralleled these with utility running power. Um, so you can see I got all the cables and everything set up here. You can see the inverter is still in AC mode and float charge. And what's going to happen here once I turn this on, the inverter is going to go, and you guys probably won't see it because I can't hold the camera and start the generators and it'll probably happen fairly quickly. Uh, but what's going to happen is the inverter is going to actually switch from uh, 
AC mode into inverter mode and start running off the batteries. Then, once the generators get fully up and going and stabilized, uh, my transfer switch right here will actually transfer the load from utility to generator. It actually has uh, generator priority on this uh, transfer switch. So it'll transfer it to generator. And once it's on generator, the inverter should go back into AC mode because now it's getting AC power from the generators and it'll start actually recharging the batteries and the inverter will do all the powering for the house. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up the last couple connections here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the generator started and then I'll turn it back on and just kind of show you the setup all the time. Okay, now you can see that I have both generators running. They're fairly quiet. Um, I got them in parallel mode. Everything's plugged in here. You can see the cable running up to the system. You can see now that the batteries are in fast charge because as the transfer switch made the transfer for the generators, the inverter had to run for a couple seconds so it just goes into a fast charge mode. It flashing like that means I believe that it's in the last 20% of the charge. But you can see that my output voltage is 126 volts coming out of the inverter right now. And we're sitting at 300 and, I don't know, 10 watts we'll call it. And then the input voltage, which this is the transfer switch. So now we've transferred utility to these generators we can see that I'm at 126 volts going into the inverter and about 370, uh, 50 to 70 watts going into the inverter right now as it starts trying to make sure those batteries are in a good condition. So what I think I can do while I got you on here is I'll go ahead and, and I've got the window cracked here guys, so just because the garage door shut don't, doesn't mean anything. Um, but what I can probably do is go ahead and shut these off. But as you can see behind me, the inverter is back into uh, fast charge AC mode right now. And it's back running on, its, on everything as normal. We're back off the utility power. It made seamless transfers. Um, you can see the input voltage. The watts are a little high because it's you know flow charging the batteries. The output voltage is a little bit lower because it's using those extra watts to do the charge. But we got everything here, it's all set up, it's ready to go in the event something goes wrong or lose power. Um, I've got about 20 hours plus on the battery bank and then uh, with the, the fuel that I have stored in the garage here and what's currently in the generators, uh, I could probably run on these generators for two or three days before I need to do some refuel. And then again, once the generators run out, the generator should have fully replenished the, the battery bank because it'll... Uh, enact the inverter to start charging again, and then that will allow me to run for another 20 hours while I figure out what my fuel situation is. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna try and splice all these together and see if I can make it make sense. And uh, again, appreciate all your comments and feedback. Uh, keep posting the stuff and I'll keep uh, answering it as many questions as I can. Thank you.